OK, in this video we're going to demonstrate how to do a five panel drug test. This is a simple dip test in human urine, uh, otherwise referred to as an in vitro test. You're looking for presence of drug and metabolites of drugs in human urine. Urine testing is perhaps the most established route for drug screening worldwide and it's popular basically because it gives you one of the easiest and longest window periods for detection of drugs after they've been used. Now, when we talk about window periods for drug detection, we're talking about the time after a drug has been used that it will still be detectable in a drug test. And urine testing will give you a window period for detection in the range of between three and five days for most drugs. Now, if you compare that with saliva testing, you've got much shorter window periods of detection for the majority of drugs. And for certain drug groups, particularly cannabis and methadone, you can be looking at only a matter of hours after the drug's been consumed for saliva testing, whereas a comparable urine test will screen them for uh, between three and five days. And in the case of cannabis, where it's been used extensively over a long period of time, that can be extended up to a matter of weeks, anything up to 28 days. So we're going to show you the procedure for running one of these tests. And we've got a sample of urine here which we're going to use. The drugs panel is a flat panel device with in this case five test membranes loaded into it and a cover which separates from the drug panel revealing the prongs which are the uh, dip prongs that go into the urine sample. Now the urine sample universally should not touch the test device. So the maximum dip line is indicated on this test membrane panel as that triangular indicator. You don't want to get any splash or urine contaminating the panel. You just want to dip the prongs into the urine sample about three quarters of their height into the urine sample and you're dipping it in for between five and ten seconds. And a good indicator of uh, that you've dipped it for sufficient time is that you can start to see the dye running up in the uh, test windows. So if I just give that a little shake, reapply the cover at that stage. And what we'd normally do in this case is to lay this on a flat surface um, and wait for the test membranes to run. But I'm going to hold this in front of the camera because osmotically there's perfectly uh, enough osmotic pressure to run these test membranes with them being held on an angle like this. And now what you're waiting for is the development of your control and test lines in each drug uh, strip. The coding on the drug strips is indicated in the coding window shown here. They're quite often colour coded nicely. So once you've done a number of these tests you'll be quite familiar with what they are. But they are, are, are coded MDMA for ecstasy, AMP for amphetamine, MOR in this case for morphine or opiates, COC for cocaine, and THC for tetrahydrocannabinol or cannabis. And what you're looking for is the presence of a test line forming in the presence of a control line. For a test to be interpretable, you must always have a control line developing. And what you're looking for is the presence or absence of a test line. A test line present indicates a negative result. There's no drug in the system or urine sample at above the cutoffs for the test in that case. And if there is drug in the sample at above or uh, at the level of the cutoff for the test, you will get no test line forming and you should interpret these results at the time frame that is indicated on the manufacturer's instructions which will be sent with them. But in most cases this is between 8 and a maximum of 10 minutes. So on this particular panel we can see that we've got control lines forming on all five drugs and we've also got test lines forming on all five drugs. Now you will notice that there's quite a bit of variance between the different test lines in terms of their thickness, the colour density and saturation on there and particularly on this test membrane on the MOR opiate test the test line is still quite vague and there's quite a bit of colour still on the uh, back of this test membrane but that's still a clear negative result for opiates and what we will see if we leave this for a full 10 minutes and show you this test panel again is that the pink dye has cleared from the, uh, the strip and that the test line is far more discernible at 10 minutes. 
but there is absolutely no requirement to wait for the full 10 minutes to interpret your results. If you've got test lines and control lines showing at 2 or 3 minutes, you can move on and perform the next test because that's a clear negative result. So what I'm going to do now is just switch camera off and then come back and show you this test panel as it appears at the 10 minute. OK, so here we are back at the 10 minute stage. And you can see now that uh, the majority of the uh, test membranes have cleared, so you're looking at a very palish pink or whitish background. And here you've got nice, clearly discernible control lines and test lines on all five of these membranes, indicating a clear negative urine screen for these five drug groups. So that's the five panel urine drug screening test. They come in a variety of combinations of drug membranes. So on this particular one, we've got a five panel with uh, opiates, amphetamine, ecstasy, cocaine, and cannabis. We uh, sell them in, I think, currently six different combinations, depending on what drugs you're interested in screening for. You should be able to find a match which will give you just the drug groups that you're interested in without paying for or testing for something that is of no interest or consequence to you. So the key really when selecting which urine drug panel to buy is to look at the drug groups of interest and matching one that best gives you that combination without any unwanted drug screens.